So, come to find out, it's... I always thought Gallatin County was the smallest county in the state, but Robertson County is. Robertson County is 100 square miles. Gallatin is 101. Um, I, I know I've had to have seen that number figure differently because I had believed differently. I remember I believed it one way, then another, and then, you know... Um, I, I thought the distinction, actually, there was, like, water. If you added the water for one, then it was less than the other. So I think if you don't add the water, then Gout County land mass is smaller. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that because Wikipedia is telling me different, okay? And everything that Wikipedia says, you know, it's absolute uh, God's truth. It's not true, but... Hey, what's up, Robertson County? Okay, so I am a candidate for Lieutenant Governor Jonathan D. Masters, and I will be the best Lieutenant Governor you've ever had in your entire life. Like, why wouldn't I, you know? Um, I, I, I do believe that I would make Kentucky much more pro prosperous and lucrative, and we'd be all be rich, and uh, it'd be really, uh, environmental is a big thing for me, so we'd be green all over the place. Um, I see, you know, green gardens all over the place, and, uh, and when you plant a garden, that is a hope for a better future, right? It's hope for, um, the future. So we should be planting seeds, planting trees. We just had Arbor Day, but this isn't, well, this is kind of about the, uh, um, election, but this is just me saying hello, hey, I, you know, I see you guys, <laughs> uh, Robertson County, not only was it, uh, about the same mass as, uh, Gallatin County, uh, in terms of land mass, but the population was actually way smaller, so the, the, you know, it felt good old boys and cliquish, um, you know, where I had came from, but in, uh, Robertson County, it's 2,000, the population is 2,282, Galton was 8,000, Breckenridge is 20,000, and Letcher County is 28,000, which means 2,282, that's very small, so not only is Robertson County the smallest county in the state, they have a tiny, tiny population, um, it's also, it's a, a and 22% of those folks are poor, um, which is uh, remarkable, one out of five. One out of five are poor, which, I mean, it's remarkable. You got a close-knit community. So, some of y'all on welfare, probably maybe most of y'all on welfare. Um, uh, one out of five of y'all are poor. So, that's, you know, that's that's welfare. You're on welfare. 38% um, in Mount uh, Olivet, which is the capital of Robertson County. Mount Olivet. I saw the courthouse the picture of the courthouse, it's adorable. You all have an adorable courthouse. I'm sure you all have a nice, quaint, tight-knit community, but you should be open to intelligence, smart ideas, uh, stop with the brain drain. You all have a dry county. Um, it's If someone drinks a Budweiser in your old town, they, you arrest them. That's ridiculous. It's actually a law in the book saying that if it looks like you're distributing, if it looks like you're trafficking alcohol, they can confiscate your car. So, um, it's the law, man, you know, it, to, tell it to the judge, tell it to the judge, it's the law, man, you broke the law, sorry, I gotta enforce it, I don't have no discretion, Robertson County, 2282, uh, Mount Olivet, their, uh, population is 299, so, you know, Warsaw is population about 2,000, so the entire county of Robertson is the population of Warsaw. Robertson is in northern Kentucky, very t just a tiny little dot. I don't, I don't know anything like a big landmark or anything that goes through it. You know, lots of trees and rivers and creeks, just like the rest of Kentucky. Um, I wrote a couple things down here. So the Mount Olivet, the only 299 people that live there, 38 percent of them are poor, which adds up to about 120. So 120 people out of the 300 are poor. So again, you know, I think what happens with like Alzey, Clay County is that a lot of poor people who's taking a lot of welfare pretend they ain't poor because all these Republicans are sitting there talking about, you know, um, how the blacks are taking all the stuff. And so, you know, they're in favor of welfare when they take it, but when they think someone else is getting, they're totally against it. Um, when the biggest recipients of welfare, especially in white Kentucky, was 88% white, is uh, white people. So that's... um. The racism is stupid, 
and uh, you know we should we should have an honest conversation. I don't want too much capitalism, and also don't want too much socialism. I want a balance, and we have a mixed system, anyways. So I think we could just uh, start start talking honestly about this, right? Just start speaking honestly. Um, so what else? There's uh the Pequa. Um, there's a city called Pequa, which I was actually excited about because there's not too many. Native American names in uh, Kentucky. So I get to see Pequa. Um, the Pequa, listen to that word. Listen to that, you know, there's a Pequa, Ohio. Uh, I think there's Pequa, Shawnee. Um, there's a Paducah, Kentucky, Canoe, Kentucky. So there's a, a few uh, other Native American named cities and towns, you know, throughout the bluegrass, um, which is sad since this is dark and bloody ground. There's Shawnee, Cherokee, Yuchi. Um, you know, uh, P Piata, Piata, Piata Watami. I'm not sure. There's a uh, Uchi Cherokee, Chickasaw, and Shawnee. Those are the four main ones. But there's, you know, there's uh, evidence for a whole bunch more. Um, so there's only a few named cities. So there's Pequot. I was excited about that. That's that's actually cool. That's that's that might be worth going to. I like y'all's courthouse too. It's adorable. Um, but Pequot, Pequot is a cool named city, um, you know, because it's named after the Pequot Indians, which I don't know if it actually says anything about the Pequot Indians, but the, uh, Pequot War, one of the very first wars that had actually happened in America was the Pequot War, it's where Thanksgiving comes from, it was the massacre on Mystic River, so the colonists came over, tried to work out with it, you know, give them food and, uh, or actually, they gave us food, right? The pilgrims, if you want to do white and red man. Um, and uh, so Thanksgiving dinner, the, uh, the, 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 the natives there, the Wampanoags gave them food. Eventually, they go to war with the Pequot, wipe out, you know, 700 people. They didn't even uh, start the war with some other tribe, but it didn't matter. English colonists just wanted to punish somebody. So, you know, the great Miles Standish, he goes in there, wipes everybody out, puts, you know, the people's head on a pike. Um, you know, didn't didn't give a fuck. So that's, uh, that's the Pequot War. And it's spelled differently. It's P-E-Q-U-O-T. But it sounds the exact same, Pequa, Pequa, same thing. So is it possible that the Pequa, you know, of Massachusetts could have migrated after the war and, uh, you know, going to Pequa, Ohio or Pequa, uh, Robertson County, Kentucky? It says uh, it lies along routes 165 and 617 south of the city, uh, Mount Olivet, the county seat. Its name refers to the Pequot tribe of the Shawnee Indians, which are indigenous to the region which became Kentucky. So that's even more exciting. So now we know that it's the Pequot Native Americans, the Shawnee. And there's no Native Americans in this state that is more Kentucky than the Shawnee. I almost feel like the Shawnee, this is their homeland. Shawnee was south, right? That's what the name Shawnee means, southern. So southern in the Great Lakes, the ones in the, they were the ones in Kentucky. And uh, the Shawnee fought like, you know, like the Dickens uh, to hold on to Kentucky. They were the most, you know, vengeful, most, you know, crazy. Nah, we ain't going to give up our land. We're going to fight to the death. And, um, and so that's Pequot. That's in northern Kentucky. It's kind of close to where Blue Licks were. Uh, where Blue Licks was at, where the Battle of Blue Licks, the last battle of Daniel Boone. So, that, you know, there's I know some uh, Native American frontier history around that area. And so that's exciting. It's uh, right next to the uh, Johnson Creek, which is a tributary of the Licking River, right? That was the, uh, the Battle of Blue Licks was on the Licking River, and this is a tributary, Johnson Creek. It's also kind of where Skipakithiki is, Clark County, which was the last known Shawnee town in Kentucky. So, um, it's also right along the rivers. Look, I mean, just looking at Kentucky, you just see so many rivers, valleys. You see so many, like, green grass and trees. Uh, it's a Garden of Eden, but no Native Americans are here, right? No Native Americans are in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, that's, uh, don't believe the hype. That's bullshit. There's a reason why Pequa is named Pequa. And actually, I want to no, I don't know. Mount Olivet and uh, Robertson County was, I think, formed in 19, or 1867, which was right after the Civil War. So I don't know why they would have been named after 
Um, okay, it says, commonly thought to be the smallest county. However, the smallest by land area is Gallatin County. See, I don't know if that's true, though. Wait. Nope. Only 0.2% is water. So that doesn't, even if you subtract the water out of Gallatin, it's still 101 square miles. So Robertson County is the smallest just because it says it's not. The numbers say otherwise. Uh, anyways, this is a, uh, the, the county seat was founded in, um, sometime. <laughs> So, sometimes, someday, it was founded, right? It wasn't just, it didn't just magically appear. Now, I always wanted to point out that, um, the, the dates of it, because Pequot, when did they name it Pequot? The last Shawnee were here in the late 1700s, so if they're naming 1800, they could just been retroactively naming it. I, I know of one city, I don't know of it personally, but I've heard of one city that's in Ohio that actually is named after a different tribe. Um, I want to say it's by Columbus. It's time to wake up, right? You hear that? Um, it's in Columbus, Ohio, north of Columbus. Um, it was Pluggy's town, who was a Mingo, but instead it's actually called Mohawk Town. I don't know. It was named after one. Anyways, it doesn't matter because we're talking about Pequa. The Pequot, and um, and so they named Robertson County. It was founded in 1867. Was when right after the Civil War, Robertson County was founded. Robertson was an old politician. He died. I, he was unremarkable. Just lots of. He was an appeals judge. He was a House representative. He was just a fucking politician, right? And uh, never like the man. Never the Supreme Court judge or uh, governor or anything like that. So. Just um, an unremarkable person wind up getting named, you know, the whole county named after him. Congratulations for him. If there's, you know, um, more, more, if there's any Robertsons, I don't know if there's any Breckeridges in Breckeridge County. I heard that there's not. But that seems, where do they go? All the Breckeridges are gone? I'm sure they're around somewhere. They're, they might be part of the Illuminati, the Illuminati of Kentucky. I don't know any per Breckeridges personally. I know Breckeridge Road, Breckeridge County. There's, you know, s historical Breckeridges. Um, and the last thing that I got here for Robertson County. Uh, I see two things here. There's a court report. And uh, so there's a uh, Rob, Robbie L. Hara. Maximum hours of sur service violations is $161.25. He's in a court report for some reason, algana.com. It's uh, published April 2nd, 2015, so it's this month. I have no idea, Algana, Wooden Algana, and it says against Robbie L. Hara of Mount Olivet, Kentucky. So there's one for Kansas City and some other cities. So I don't know, somebody is out of town and got fucked up, got some maximum hours of service violation and a $161 fine. Maximum hours of a service violation. I don't know. I have no idea what, what the crime is or what the fuck is going on. And uh, now their name's published for uh, all to see. You know, Robbie L. Hara is representing Mount Olivet, Kentucky. There's only 299 people that live in, you know. I bet I bet they know exactly who, who I'm talking about. So, Robertson County, I'm going to read this. MaysvilleOnline.com. This is some funds that actually just came into y'all, so y'all need to pay attention to it. And uh, we'll call it a uh, call tonight, April 9th, 2015. This is also recent. Robertson County has been awarded federal funds made available through the Department of Homeland Security, uh, DHS Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA under the Emergency Food and Shelter National Board Program. Robertson County has been chosen to receive $17,260 to supplement emergency food and shelter programs in the county. The selection was made by a national board. That is chaired by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Federal Emergency Management Agency and consists of representatives from the American Red Cross, Catholic Charities, USA National Council of Churches of Christ in the USA, the Jewish Foundation, uh, Federations of North American Salvation Army, and United Way Worldwide. The local board was charged to distribute food funds uh, appropriated by Congress to help expand the capacity of food and shelter programs and high-need areas around the country. 
So the local board, a local board will determine how the funds are awarded in Robertson County. So there's going to be a local board that's created that's going to take all this money and pass it out to whoever, you know, is given food and shelter and programs for people that need it. So I guess maybe the flooding or something that's, uh, it's raining last night, actually. So there's, a, there is probably lots of flash floods all over the place. Whenever it rains too much here, I cannot turn left. Because the road will be gone and the bridge will be under the water. Um, let's see. The local board is responsible for recommending agencies to receive these funds and any additional funds made available under this phase of the program. Under the terms of the grant from the national board, local agencies chosen to receive funds must be private, voluntary, nonprofits, or units of government eligible to receive federal funds. Some other stuff. You check it out. It's on MaysvilleOnline.com. Uh, public or private voluntary agencies interested in applying for emergency food and shelter program funds must contact Linda Edwards, 69 McDowell Street, Mount Olivet, Kentucky, 41064, or phone number 606-724-5513 for an application. The deadline for applications to be received is April 17th, 2015, so it's over. <laughs> it's over. I'm so sorry for putting you all through that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you had, uh, the final deadline was, uh, eight fucking days, right? So they got a shit ton of money and you had eight fucking days to get it in, get the application in, and talk to the, the person that you're supposed to talk to, Linda Edwards, which I'm sure she's part of the decision-making process. Only eight days, they made sure their friends knew exactly what was going on, they made sure all their friends applied for it, and if you're some, you know, somebody they didn't really know or didn't like, they were not encouraging, they were not forthright with you, and they did not let you know what was going on. So I'd be very skeptical about where that money is going to be going, you know. Uh, I want to see a budget, I want to see where this actually went to. It went to somebody, and it went to somebody in your community. It Was it fairly distributed? Did it get to the people that needed it? And uh, if so, then that's good. I have no complaints with that then. Um, so yeah, Robertson County, uh, it's not, uh, little GC no more, it's little, it's little R R C, you know, little RC, little Robertson County, um, so yeah, uh, make sure you go vote, if you're a Democrat, make sure you go vote, and, um, if you're a Republican, the election is, it actually been postponed to June, so, uh, make sure in June the, the second, make sure you go vote June 2nd, Republican and Democrats, your all's election day is on May 19th, so make sure you vote May 19th. You got till 6 p.m. Uh, to you know make your voice heard, and hopefully we get seven percent of the population right. That's the turnout rate, and there's only two candidates. 50-50 coin toss. I don't give a fuck about them polls. Uh, you know how many people they didn't know I was going to talk to Mount Olivet. There's 299 people. Did Jack Conway come to your old town? At least I'm talking. I mean, I don't have money. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Y'all want to donate money? I'll give me some gas money. I'll go to your I'll go to your you know uh, town and give you a little speech. I'll tell you my ideas. I'll talk to you in person. But you know, I don't have any money. So what am I supposed to do? You know, so I'm using the internet. This is one way of we can communicate to each other. And and good for me, right? Good for me. Uh, 2015 occupied May 19th. Jonathan Masters. Peace, Robertson County.